Earl Glanshaw, foreman here at Township Chevrolet for another edition of Tech Talk, and we're going to stick with our how-to segment. Uh, one thing people have a lot of, uh, I don't know what you want to say it, a lot of, uh, you get nervous about is going to look at used car especially when you're not buying it from a dealership or from a used car lot uh, you're buying a private sale and a lot of people uh, you know get themselves into an, an issue where they have a car that they you know requires a lot of work or it wasn't what they wanted or so we're just going to go through a few tips and tricks maybe some things you never really thought about uh, that might help your car buying experience uh, when you have to take care of it yourself so we'll go ahead and uh, We'll kind of look at the outside of the car first, move to the inside, just a few things to think about, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. So maybe some things you didn't really think about. You're going to look at this car. It's, uh, you know, it's a Sunday or Saturday. Grad you usually go to is closed. Maybe your father's not around, or your brother, or your mother, whoever else would help you kind of go look at that car. Your best friends, you get to go yourself, or you're going with someone who's not too knowledgeable on looking at cars either. So, a few things you might want to think about taking. One, clothes you don't mind getting dirty. Uh, if you want to get down underneath the car, lay down on the ground, take a look at some stuff, uh, get down in the nitty gritty and look at some, you know, underneath the engine bonnet, get in there and, and, and actually feel some stuff and put your hands on some stuff to see if it's the car you want or, you know, if there's any mechanical issues or, you know, see if you see any fluids leaking, you want to see what kind of fluids they are that are leaking out of there. Dirty clothes are definitely a must have. Bring a rag with you to wipe your hands off as you're going or to put down on the ground to kneel on. Another thing to think about too is uh, flashlight. Flashlight uh, is great. You get out there, you get it looking, you see something kind of down low, you're not really sure what you're looking at. You can't get a look in there or maybe there's a dome light in the car that doesn't work because you got to remember you're going to look at a car that you're not too familiar with. Uh, maybe the trunk light doesn't work and you want to get in there and take a look at the trunk floor to make sure there's no holes in it. So just a couple of things you might want to think about before you uh, head to go look at the car. Um, you got to remember it's your money you're spending so don't be shy to look at everything. Um, if someone's really interested in selling the car and they got nothing to hide, they won't mind you looking it around. And if you can get out for a test drive, you want to come to a parking lot somewhere where you're kind of away from the eyes of the guy who owns the vehicle, and you, you have that opportunity, then great, go ahead and if that makes you feel more comfortable, definitely go ahead. Um, the ideal thing, obviously, would be to take it to a garage or another or a shop or someone you trust, have them put it up on a hoist and check it out from one end to the other. But unfortunately, we're gonna we're gonna pretend that you can't do that. You're kind of on your own and you're really looking at this car and this is the deal you wanted and you wanna you wanna look at it yourself. So um, so we'll start at the outside of the car. Got our flashlight, got our clothes, so uh, we can get dirty and uh, let's start taking a look. So one thing everyone hates buying is tires. Uh, for the most part. They're one of those things they you know they cost quite a bit of money. You put them on and instantly the day you put them on they're wearing out. Uh, tires are a great thing to check out on a used car. Uh, for one you don't want to spend the money. If you're buying this car and you're putting a lot of money down on it you, maybe you don't want to purchase those tires so you want something that's going to have tires on it for a while. Number two there's a, a lot of telltale signs that the tires can tell you about how the car has been looked after, if there's any steering or suspension issues and maybe even how the car has been driven. So when you take a look, uh, I've got a video, you can take a look there, maybe I'll see if Phil can throw it up in the description somewhere or throw it up above my head somewhere and uh, you guys can click on that kind of show you it's all about tires and alignment stuff like that. So. If you take a look and you see that their tires worn on one side or the other, or it's cupped really bad, or it's one tire is really worn out on one side of the car but not on the other, that could be an alignment issue, could be a suspension issue, uh, could be shocks or struts that are worn out, or it could be someone with a heavy foot. Maybe they got a, a son or a grandson, or maybe the husband's driving the car, um, and, and you know. Uh, really heavy on the gas or heavy on the brake. So just something to consider. You can also take a look in right quick through the wheels, take a look at the brakes, see how rusty the rotors are. The rust, the rotors in the most part should be, you know, fairly shiny. They're not, it's not a jewel obviously, but if you see a lot of heavy rust build up on it, it's one of two things. Either A, it's been sitting for a while and the guy's been trying to sell it and that's kind of a, you know, maybe either he's asking too much or maybe the car's not worth what he's asking. So kind of take that into account too. Also, It'll kind of you can you can see the brakes through most wheels and you can kind of get an overview of that. So while you're down looking outside of the car, you've looked at the tires. The tires, let's say, all look good. You're gonna look at the rest of the car. You're gonna look for any body damage. Most of the time, if someone likes their car and looks after it and takes care of it, they get that kind of stuff fixed up. So you're gonna look for things like any scrapes or dents or bangs. You're gonna look for uh, any spots where paint's missing or chipped off because it may not be rusted now, but in six months' time after you own the car, maybe it will be rusted. Or it's something you gotta you know think about getting fixed up. Um, you also want to take a look at the glass fill. Uh, that's real expensive too, right? So you, some windshields, especially if they got the uh, rain sensing windshield uh, or it's an off kind of make model, 
uh, windshields can be really expensive. And if it's already cracked, whether you, you get glass insurance, they're not going to replace your window for you if the window's already cracked when you buy the car. So that's something you're going to have to spend in a pocket. So that's something to look at too. Um, you look down the side of the car, the back of the car, obviously you want to check the lights. Uh, you're going to want to check, uh, see if your things like your rear defroster, all your, kind of your safety equipment back here, your reflectors are on, your bumpers are good and secure. Um, all the door handles are in there. Uh, all your hubcaps, your wheel nuts, all that kind of stuff. So just in a quick look around the vehicle, you can really get an idea of what kind of condition it's in. Obviously this car looks really good. It's got good tires, it's got good brakes. I don't see any damage anywhere. Everything looks pretty good. So um, maybe we'll pop the hood next and we'll get a look under there and uh, give you a kind of couple pointers on what to look at under there. So this is where you want to have that rag ready, have your flashlight ready. So open the hood, obviously one of the quick things to check pull the dipstick, check the engine oil, make sure it looks clean. If it's not clean or dirty, ask him when he's had a change. Maybe ask him who's changed it. Maybe it's a dealer maintained thing or it's been done at a professional shop in the city or the town where you're from. Maybe you know the technician that's been looking after you. You can go actually ask him some you know, direct questions about the car. Uh, if he says he does it itself, not necessarily mean it's a bad thing, just means that you know maybe he didn't use the right oil. Maybe he wasn't as vigilant to do his oil changes when he was supposed to. So you can get really down in those areas around here. You want to take a look, make sure there's no leaks. Obviously, if the oil's low, maybe it's burning it, maybe it's leaking it. So take your flashlight, take a look around. You're just looking for any spots that are wet. You don't have to know what it is, where it's leaking from. You just want to know if it's leaking or not. Is that something you have to be concerned about? Uh, maybe ask the person that's you're buying the cart and they might tell you all oh, that time and cover gasket has been leaking like that for the last couple of years. My technician says it's not too, too bad. I've been just keeping my eye on it. Uh, maybe it'll be that shock surprise. Oh, geez, I didn't know that was leaking. And maybe it gives you a bit of bargaining uh, tool there to kind of to, to beat the price down a little bit. So everything under the hood here looks pretty good. Um, you know, it'd be nice to be able to open the air filter, check all that kind of stuff. But you got you to gotta remember you're kind of limited on your time. You're limited on your tools. And... Um, you know, he's probably not wanting you poking and prodding at the car too, too much and, you know, pulling pieces off, right? But that's kind of stuff you can do that's real non-intrusive. Maybe take a look at the battery. Uh, this one's covered up, but in a lot of older vehicles, this you can take the cover off. You know, if you get a whole bunch of uh, buildup of corrosion and stuff around the battery, it might tell you that, you know, maybe it's not, not as maintained as good as he says it's going to, as it's maintained. So just a few other things to think about there. Um, so we've checked all the fluids. We look kind of around the car, tires, brakes and stuff and what we can see. Um, Another good opportunity to get the hood up here. You can kind of lay underneath the car and uh, you now you get your dirty clothes on and you can, you can get under there, take a look at the floor pans and you're looking for any real heavy rust. Same thing on the body. If you see a bunch of rust, uh, then maybe you want to just wait that extra day and take it somewhere to get it checked out. Or, you know, if you know well enough about it and it doesn't look too, too bad, then maybe take a chance on it. But at least take a look. So what we'll do right now, I guess maybe we'll move to the trunk. That'll just take a minute and we'll show you what to kind of have a look at in there. So a trunk's not an area that most people look at when they go look at a car. I'll tell you, there's a couple things you really want to check out in here. Number one, uh, if you're buying this sedan and you know you've got a lot of stuff you like to carry and uh, having the seats flip down are important, well, that's where your seat locks are. So that's where you can check the operation of these seats. Make sure they fold down. Maybe that's something important to you. These could could be a, uh, you know, a thing that's expensive to fix. So you want to make sure that's done. Um, you can check and make sure you get a spare tire. If you've got a spare tire in there and it's worn completely right off or it's never been replaced or it's, you know, got no air in it, um, you know, maybe that's another sign it's not maintained very well. This is also a spot that a lot of cars will tend to have a leak. So you want to check and make sure there's no real heavy rust issues or any air, any uh, signs, anything leaking in here. So even though the trunk is empty and, you know, it, it doesn't seem like it's that big a deal, it's a real good spot to see some telltale signs of how the car is looked after. So let's take a look on the inside of the car. All right, so now we're inside the vehicle, and if you haven't already gone for a test drive, good time to go for a test drive. Uh, when you're driving, put your foot in the brake. Does the brake pedal pulsate? Does it make a bunch of noise? It might be an indication that you got a brake issue. Does it take it up to highway speeds? Does the steering wheel shake? Could it have a wheel out of balance or maybe a bent wheel or maybe you got something else going, going on with the drivetrain. So um, another thing to do too, you want to make sure anything that's important to you in here that's electrical, you want to make sure it works because this stuff in the new vehicles now, uh, you know, it's expensive to replace. This isn't just your uh, average everyday radio or uh, HVAC unit. So you want to make sure that stuff works. Turn the radio on, turn the heater on, make sure all the settings in the heater work. 
It only takes a few seconds to do and could really save yourself a lot of money down the road. Power windows, power mirrors, whatever is important to you and whatever you're gonna use that car for. If you're driving, uh, if you're gonna go buy this car as just a winter beater that you're gonna drive around uh, just to get back and forth to work and you don't care if the radio works or if the power windows in the back work Well, then that's not important to you But anything you kind of got to know what you're going into and what you really want to get out of what you're investing in the vehicle Right and how much you're spending on it So there's everything in here every button in here has got to work and got to do something So it only takes a second to press every button to make sure it works um, Also, it's a good time to look take I mean obviously if the car is clean inside and the interior looks great this is where the person spends most of the time that owns a vehicle. So if they don't care what it looks like in here, chances are they don't care about anything else in this vehicle. So this is a good way to determine, well, this is a this has been really looked after. There's no rips, there's no tears, there's no stains. It's not all piled up with dog hair. There's not scratches all over there from the dog jumping up on the, on the window. So you kind of get an idea of this guy really looks after his vehicle. This lady looks after her vehicle and she, you know, she's looking for it to last a long time. And when it comes time to sell, she's looking to have something worth selling. So these are all things you wanna look at, wipers, all that kind of stuff. Um, another thing to think about too, if you're buying something fairly new, especially private sale, and you're getting into a higher dollar or it's new enough where you think the, the, the person still might have payments on it, call your bank, do a lien check. Make sure that there's no money owing on that car. Uh, you can maybe buy the car and a couple of weeks later, a month later, you could have a, someone come to your door and just take that thing away from you. So. Um, you definitely want to do a lien check and if you're buying you know from a car lot maybe a smaller car lot um, or even a dealership you want to ask them to do a Carfax report that'll kind of tell you if it's been damaged if the odometer has been messed with if uh, you know it's a theft recovery or it'll give you the history of the vehicle it'll even uh, show you what maintenance stuff has been done and recalls and stuff like that so it's uh, you know most reputable places will provide that for you if you ask for it obviously you can't do it a private sale but if you get the VIN number you can pay for it yourself you can go online uh, there's a few companies that do it and you can get your own Carfax report so go look at the car if it's everything you wanted and the price is right um, and you're serious about buying it and you're investing enough money depending on what that is, or everyone's different, $100 to some people is a lot of money. It could be $10,000, it could be $50,000. Whatever it is to you where you kind of feel like this is not something you just want to lose, uh, definitely get your uh, lien check done and get a car, car fax report done. And then um, when it comes time to, uh, to sign the paperwork when you're dealing with a private sale, you're gonna want everything on the uh, registration signed so the person's name, the date, what you paid for it, and the kilometers, it'll all be on the back of the registration. They keep half for their license plate and PEI, and you keep the other half to go to the DMV to get it registered in your name. It's also a good idea to have a bill of sale done up. And all the bill of sale needs to have is uh, the person selling the car, the person buying the car, their name, the VIN number, uh, how much you're paying for the vehicle, and the date. Both of you sign it, you take that to the DMV, and you shouldn't have any problems when it comes time to register that vehicle. So. Um, just a few things to think about. I know it's a longer video, but just some stuff to think about. Grab your flashlight, grab some clothes you don't mind getting dirty, and get right in there. And just remember, it's your money. You're the you're the person buying the vehicle, and you're the person to live with the decision. So you definitely want to take your time and look that thing over right. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any uh, any questions or any comments, drop them down below. Uh, any suggestions on videos, uh, just let us know here. And uh, anyway, we look forward to seeing you.